Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to go over the very basics of color theory. And I'm not saying that I'm a complete expert on color theory. I don't have any formal university experience, but I would say that I'm pretty knowledgeable in it considering all the research I've done and the hands-on experiments I've done and all that kind of thing. So um, just know that I am not the be all end all of color theory and there are loads of other sources that you should look at as well and yeah so that's my disclaimer we're just gonna jump right in so first things first I would recommend you downloading this app here the color wheel app um, I'm not gonna tap with my pencil anymore because I realize that can be really annoying um, I know that when I edit the videos and it has like Apple Pencil usage, I can hear like the tap tap and it's just so annoying to me. So I'm not going to put you through that misery. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I would, it's a free app. Um, I would absolutely recommend it. This app has been a lifesaver when it comes to me using color theory and all that kind of thing. Um, I know that when I um, was doing this one painting, um, I can show you what painting it was actually. Um, I used a lot of my paintings. I use color theory, all of them really, to be honest. Um, and it was really helpful. And the painting just looks a lot more cohesive when you use color theory. Um, it just looks better, honestly. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, so first thing you need to know about color theory is your primary colors, secondary colors, and tetrary colors. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I'm going to say it. I apologize if I say that wrong and it drives you nuts. Um, yeah, so tetrary is how I'm going to say it. <laughs> that's probably wrong, but whatever. Um, so your primary colors are these three here. Your red, yellow, and blue are red, yellow, red, yellow, and blue are your primary colors. Your secondary colors are the colors that you get when you mix those primary colors together. So I don't know about you, but when I was in like second, third grade, I um, learned, I mean, I didn't learn about color theory per se, but I learned about just colors, you know, I mean, we all do really when we're in school, right? We color with our crayons and our markers and our acrylic non-toxic craft paint and all that kind of thing. Um, so when I was in school and I would mix, you know, 12, 13 year old girl, even younger than that, and I would mix red and yellow, I would get orange, right? And then when you mix red and blue, you get purple. And then when you mix blue and yellow, you get green. Okay, so um, those are your secondary colors, orange, purple, and green, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we can open Procreate and um, I can just jot that down here. So just as an example, um, let's do our primaries first. We have blue yellow and red. So just as an example, those are your primaries. When you mix um, red and yellow together, you get a color. When you mix yellow and blue together, you get a color. Um, when you mix blue and red together, you get a color. And let's do this here instead. Um, I'm using my finger so it's not completely precise and I'm also not zoomed in so <laughs> that's probably why it looks weird. Um, so the colors that you get when you mix blue and yellow together um, is green obviously. Sorry about that, that was my husband. <laughs> um, and then when you mix blue and red together you get purple. Oh sorry. And then when you mix mix yellow and red together, you get orange. And you can honestly see it on your color wheel here. Um, if you work with any sort of like digital media or anything like that, like on Photoshop, um, 
I'm not sure if Lightroom has this. Maybe it does. I don't know. Photoshop, um, Adobe Illustrator, maybe. I'm pretty positive they do. Um, anything, really. Paint. I mean, like, procreate everything. Um, you see this color wheel, I'm sure. And this is your color wheel, pretty much. You know, you have your primary, your red, blue, green, or sorry, red, blue, and yellow. And then you have your, actually, though, I take that back. Um, in like digital media and stuff, your primary is red, blue, and green. Um, but in traditional like painting and stuff, it's red, blue, and yellow. Um, so it's, it's different when it comes to digital. So it's probably best that I don't do it here, but this is the easiest way I can record videos. So we're just going to go with it for now. So when you mix, um, let's say like traditional, let's, let's skip the blue or the green. Okay. Because it is digital. Um, let's say traditional, just as an example, we mix yellow and red together, right? So, um, we are going to mix, or you know what? I can just color drop, um, or not color drop, but you know what I mean? Um, so we have yellow and if we lower the opacity to 50%, just so it's equal amount of paint or color, um, we get orange. Okay. So, um, and it should work vice versa. You know, you get orange. Um, and then when you mix blue and red, right? Because we get, okay. Blue and red, you get purple. So red into the blue, you get purple. Blue into the red, you get purple. Um, and with green, it's different because the primaries in, in digital media are, are blue, green, and red. Um, so you would obviously, to get green, you would have to mix this bright yellow and this like teal color, to be perfectly honest. So it would have to be like this. I mean, you kind of get green, not completely, but you know, you, you get there. I mean, <laughs> it's not like, cause it is digital, so it's not the best, um, best example to be honest but let's do that and then let's throw in some yellow and you if you color pick that you are in the green spectrum you know what I mean so yeah um but in traditional media this is probably not going to work when you mix blue and yellow together on digital it's probably not going to work um because yellow's over here and blue's all the way over here and so you're probably going to get like a really muddy this color really or something you know um but let's just try. So we have our yellow. Let's do our blue. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. Um, but if you were to mix like blue and yellow, your primary blue and yellow, you would get a primary or a secondary green. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so that's that. So we're just doing traditional. I'm not going to go into the digital because that's a whole, a whole other thing. So your primaries in traditional media, like in your, which is what I work with, to be honest, in your, um, you know, acrylic paints, oils, things like that are these three. Your secondary are these three. So if you have your, if you have Pinterest, um, I would shameless plug really recommend that you follow me on Pinterest because I like to like this, for example, I didn't even realize I had this up. <laughs> I was supposed to be over on my, over on my like profile. Um, I plug in a lot of things. Okay. I plug in color palettes. I plug in artistic information, technique, knowledge, all that kind of thing. Um, references from faces. You can tell I have a huge crush on this woman right now. I'm like pinning all of her. Pretty sure these are the three, this three, like the same three women. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but, um, yeah. So <laughs> face references for drawing, um, space and places references and all that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, so I have in my, um, art technique and knowledge board, I have a bunch of color theory pins. If you want to check those out, um, this is one of my favorite ones. So here we have like primary, secondary and tetrary or ter tertiary or however you say it. I don't know. Um, so yeah. So your, if we can like, let's see if we can zoom into here. 
Can we zoom into here? Okay. So you can see the primaries, the red, blue, where are they? Red. Okay. So these aren't like red, blue, and yellow, let's say. Okay. And then you mix and you get green, orange, and purple. And then your tetrary or whatever would be the ones that are a mix of um, your you know, a mix of like your secondary and all that kind of thing. So it's really hard for me to explain. Um, <laughs> so what I can do is go into color wheel. Um, so these are your, these would be your tetrary or however you say it. Um, and these are your secondary and these are your primary. Okay. So when you mix secondary and primary colors, you get your tetrary pretty much. Um, you have your orange and your yellow, which is a primary and secondary and tetrary or however you say it is a yellow orange. Um, you mix primary red and secondary orange and you get this red orange. Primary red, secondary purple, you get this magenta color, so on and so forth. Okay. So those are your primary, secondary and, and tetrary. <laughs> horrible pronunciation. Sorry, I'm just taking a sip of my coffee before it gets cold. I have to drink this. Okay, so um, so let's go back to Pinterest, actually. We'll go back to this thing. Oh, hold on. So color harmony is when you use the color wheel and color theory like the primary secondary tetuary colors to create harmonious color palettes okay so like the palettes that you use in your painting for example um so we're just going to clear all this and we are going to go into our wheel so okay so our complementary, you know what? Let's go back to color wheel. Our complementary colors, we're actually going to use this as a guide, right? So our primaries are yellow, traditional primaries anyway, red and blue. Okay, so those are our primary colors. Blue and orange are on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, meaning they are complementary colors, okay? And blue and orange are absolutely my favorite, um, is like my favorite color theory or color composition or combination or whatever you want to call it ever. Like I use blue and orange all the time, especially in traditional media. Like when I do my oil paintings, for example, I use like burnt sienna and phthalo blue or whatever together all the time. <laughs> like those are my favorite favorites like I'm surprised I haven't done a painting with them yet actually like a digital painting but anyway so um so there's that and then we do our other primary which is yellow and completely across from yellow is purple that's a secondary color by the way complementary colors the exact opposite is always going to be the secondary color so um obviously if you're working with your primaries so blue is orange was which is a secondary yellow is purple which is a secondary and red is green which is a secondary um so yeah so those are the are the complete opposite sides of the spectrum um on the wheel and if you notice i mean what's the first thing that comes to mind when you see red and green right like christmas right so um holiday marketing and all that kind of thing you know they're really smart with that kind of shit because it's like oh look at all this red and green it's so like complementary to the eye which is why they're called complementary colors um let me buy it you know so color psychology when it comes to like business and stuff is also super important but i'm not even gonna go into that so it's just a whole other ball game um so yeah um okay I apologize for the random pauses. It's because I'm drinking my coffee. Um, so when you... Okay, so we have our complementary colors. Now, you see complementary colors being um, used often, um, to be honest. So if we go back to home... Uh, comp 
mentory how do you spell that <laughs> colors um, you see it often here we have blue and orange as I mentioned you have your primary blue your orange secondary red and green okay so your primary is the red your secondary is the green um, more blue and orange blue and orange is a very popular complementary color scheme um, so yeah and it looks good and that's the thing it's something that I that I have discovered just via um, experimentation is when you have a little less of the other paint of the other color with complementary color schemes it looks a lot better as opposed to like having equal amounts so if you look at these you see a lot of like in this photo for example we have a ton of blue and just a splash literally of orange and in this one you see a bunch of blue everywhere as the background and then some you know some spots of orange and then you know again the major color here is red and then you have bits of green major color here is blue bit of orange major color here is red green again you know so it looks better to the eye more pleasing to the eye at least this is what i've discovered when you have a whole um when you have a whole thing that's like this is a little bit too bright just a piece of Oh, hold on just a piece of it so if you were to for example do like the whole entire half um half of the canvas it definitely looks fine you know I'm not saying that it doesn't look good but um like that versus like a bunch of green and a bit of red is far more pleasing to the eye you can see it there right or a bit of or a bunch of red and a bit of green looks far better or if you have um oh we don't need that let's say you have orange or no let's say you have blue right and you take orange and you do like a line through that you know um, as opposed to, looks like the Scottish flag, except it's orange instead of white. Um, let's say you do half the amount of it. And it does look fine, but it looks much better if you were to decrease and increase, decrease one color, increase the other. Um, or the opposite. You know what I mean? It just looks far better. So that's what I've realized in my painting when I use like just like if I do like a crazy intricate oil piece and I the entire canvas is mostly blue and stuff and purple I use like a dash of like a golden orange you know what I mean um so we can actually and show you what I mean with that so because I'm a visual learner so I have to like see everything so let's say this is like the canvas and then like a yellowish orange color and just like a bit of that you know what I mean it looks far better than if all of these were equal amounts of color um, and this is how I come up with my color the colors that I want to use in my paintings um, I know that I get a bunch of Instagram comments especially on my oil pieces where people are like you have such a good eye for color um and I'm always like well it's because I use a color wheel <laughs> I cheat a little bit you know it's not like I just randomly think oh these would be lovely together you know I definitely use a color wheel for sure so this versus like that for example this just looks far better you know so um so that's our complementary, and then we have our triadic, which is just like the three um, main colors on the wheel. So you have your primary, your secondary, and your tetrary, or whatever, however it's pronounced, <laughs> um, which are those and these guys. 
Um, so you see, you also see a lot, like this reminds me of the tropics, for example. You also see a lot of like, um, let's say, tertiary, tertiary, tertiary. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, teal colors. Okay, maybe teal was a bad idea, but you kind of see it. Okay, here you see it. You've got your magenta, orange, and teal. Um, again, you have your magenta, orange, and teal. Obviously, they're like different shades of those values and stuff. Um, but, I mean, here we go again. Magenta, orange, orange, gold, and teal. Um and so you see it a lot, you know, you see it often. Um, and then we go back to color wheel and so that's our triadic, okay? Um, and then we have our analogous color scheme, which are the colors that are right next to each other, the three colors that are right next to each other. So if we're looking at our red, obviously, depending on which direction you're in, um, red, orange, red, red, orange, and yellow, or sorry, red, red, orange, and orange. <laughs> and then here we have red, purple, and magenta, purple, indigo, and blue, blue, teal, green, teal, green, lime green, etc., etc., etc. So that's your analogous. And then split complementary are your complementary colors, except you are um, you cut the other half or the other end in half or not in half, but like to both sides, really complicated. Okay. So you have your complementary, right? And we have yellow and, and purple. Oh my gosh. I'm like, so out of it, <laughs> yellow and purple. So your split complementary would be yellow with this magenta and this indigo purple. Not purple exactly, but the colors beside it. Okay, so that's your. those are your split complementary colors. So if we go back, there we have it. Yellow, indigo, and magenta or fuchsia, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then if you go to red, our split complementary colors with red are green and teal. Um, and I think you see that often, actually. So... Um, so let's do red split complementary. Okay. So we have, um, what was it? Red, green, and teal. Or not necessarily like green, green, maybe? Like, uh. Well, maybe, I don't know. Red, green, and teal, let's say, right? So Pinterest. Um, so here we have red, teal, and orange. Um, we have red, teal, greenish teal. Um, we have a red, orange, and blue. Um, here we go again. You know what I mean? So like, and obviously it's used often in fashion and everything like that. So color theory is super, super important. Um, and then we have our tetradic color scheme and then our square color scheme. I feel like there's another name for this square one, but yeah, basically. Um, so I would definitely recommend you download the color wheel app. This is what the icon looks like. Um, and you can also change like the values and saturation and all that kind of thing. So um, I'm not going to go into like super detail with the rest of them because it's just going to be way too long. But if you click on this wheel tab here, you change the actual wheel. Okay, so you have different options there. Um, this one's my favorite because I love pastels. Okay, so we're going to go back to Pinterest. I'm um, going to go to saved and click on this. Um, so yeah, that's your color harmony. You know what I mean? Like when you do like analogous complementary, um, split complementary, 
those colors lend a lot of harmony to your art, to your pieces. So when you, we can just do painting. Oh wait, this is on my board. Hold on, let's go to home. Um, you know, so here we have complementary colors. We have the blue and the orange. Um, we have some red there, bits of green, but you see that it's mostly this glowing orange color on the canvas with hints of blue, right? And so that's very pleasing to the eye. Um, and then when you mix in colors that really just don't go well, you know, those art pieces that you look at them and you're like, oh my God, I don't know what it is about this, but it's just weird. Like, I don't, I don't know if I like this, you know, like it's more than likely they didn't use color harmony in their piece, in their art. And that's why it's a little bit off-putting. Um, and I find that when you do use color theory and color harmony and all that kind of thing, um, you know, you definitely get a lot more attention for your art. Um, I know that it's, you know, and I'm not, I'm really not trying to put anyone down and stuff, but like, it's very, very common for acrylic pourers, like people who do fluid art with the cells and stuff to just throw in every single color that they find in on their shelves into the art, which, you know, that's their form of expression. And again, I don't want to like, talk down on anyone or anything like that. Um, and good on you for, you know, finding that form of expression. I mean, even here, you're using color theory, even in this one. And this just looks like a mess, right? But it really isn't. Look at those like spots of green, right? So we can just go to the color wheel. Let's grab our normal one. And we have our um, green. So with green, you get orange and magenta. And so here, what do you see a lot of? You see a lot of orange, magenta, golden orange colors and those bits of green. So even in this one, um, the artist is using color theory and color harmony. So yeah, so I would definitely um, recommend working with color theory and just experiment. You know what I mean? Like, um, I would experiment with traditional media as opposed to anything digital because you do have a difference in the color, um, you know, in your color wheel. It is different. Um, but like in traditional media, just take out your craft paint, your acrylics, something that isn't too expensive, your colored pencil, you know, and just have at it, you know, like just spend an hour getting to know your colors and seeing how they work together and what works best for you and what you enjoy, you know. So, um, so again, I would recommend, you know, just mixing your colors if you haven't done that. Let's say we mix red and blue playing around and we get purple, you know, and you mix your green. Um, or you know what, let's, let's avoid green actually, I lied. You mix your yellow and your red and you get orange and, you know, just play around with your colors. Um, and then when you're, when you're doing that and you get a hang of that, move on to the next thing, like move on to, um, you know, color harmonies. So flood your canvas with red, for example, and take just spots of, you know, bits of green and just um, paint some different shades of green there maybe, you know. And then what you can also do is go back to your color wheel and you look at your split complementary or whatever. Um, and you think, oh, maybe I can mix some teal in there or like a bluish greenish kind of color or whatever. Sea green, let's say. Um, some of that in there. Let's mix in some orange, bright orange just to give it some more dimension in there. And this is literally just me using my knowledge in color theory, like from what I've learned, you know? Um, and yeah, so just experiment, play around, you know, get to know your colors and your harmonies and all that kind of thing. 
and use more of that in your art and you'll definitely see an improvement in terms of you know because especially acrylic pourers like people who do like fluid art you know acrylic pouring I often hear because I'm I'm um added to two different pouring groups on Facebook and I'm constantly constantly seeing people post their fluid art and going I don't know what's wrong with my colors they look so weird together can someone help me how do I choose the right colors how do I choose the right colors and the answer is simply use your color harmonies that is the answer, literally. <laughs> like, just whip out your color wheel app um, or physical color wheel. You can get one at the art store, um, maybe for like five, eight dollars. Between, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's less than that. I live in Norway. Everything is insanely expensive here. So, <laughs> in our art shop, um, in our art shop, which is about half an hour away the color wheel the guy is selling there is like $15 or something. So it's really expensive. So that's why I have this um, instead of having a traditional one. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for color theory. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any ideas for other videos in the comments and see you in the next video.